For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. Oh, hey. 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 Praise the Lord. Yeah, Somebody hey. praise him for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, so I want to hear praise the Lord. Amen. Hey. Amen. I think we've been quiet too long. Amen. Lord. Turn in your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Oh, my. Boy, that stirred my soul. I love that song. Yeah. <coughs> I haven't heard it in a long time, but amen. Hey. Well, we're not going to have a, a shouting message here this morning, hey. but that's all right. We got one that we need. That's right. And if you uh, <coughs> don't have a pen, there's some pens back over here. But remember, you're, if you got a bulletin, you can turn over. They got a place for notes. And I'd like you to drop some scriptures down, if you will. I keep running into this over and over, and I haven't preached it in years. I don't, don't always. Well, of course, I, I'm not preaching the same message here. I always tweak it, always make it different. That's right. But uh, I'm gonna talk. I keep running into preachers that don't even know this, and some of my people will know it. I'm gonna talk about cremation here this morning. So you just we'll shout it out at the end of the service. Okay? We can we can we cannot just just for your information. And if you want to take notes, please do. I keep running into preachers that do not know, and I want I want it to get out on the internet. Maybe it'll it'll be a help to somebody else too. So please, please, just want you to have the information. And God bless you for coming this morning and being right in the middle. It's, it's one of the doctrines that's been almost forgotten, and that's the sanctity of the Christian's body. Look with me at First Corinthians chapter six and verse nineteen. Uh, Paul said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the precious word of God. Help us to just to learn something today we can share with others and help others with we want to be a blessing. And oh God, would you fill us with the Spirit of God. Lord, we feel the presence of God here this morning. Well, I felt him here with the, the songs that we sang. And, and Lord, and the specials that we sang here. Lord, I pray you'll, you'll put your print and your stamp on of what we're saying here this morning. Help us to be uh, just as, as powerful as God is powerful. Lord, we can't preach the Word of God without you. Help us, Lord, this morning. And as sweet as Jesus was sweet. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It, it uh, says, and you know what worries me, I guess, is this adult crowd that's aborting babies, you know. You know one of the things they say all the time is, it's my body. My body, I'll abort them if I want to. No, if, if you were saved, your body belongs to God. And if you're not, it's still not your body because you're not killing you. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's another thing. But our bodies belong to God. Just remember that. And they've been cleansed and sanctified and saved by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus. We just sang those songs. They're wonderful songs. They're temples of the Holy Spirit. And uh, um, this came up several years ago. In fact, it came up. One of our um, members uh, was cremated. And that's, you know, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. And, and that is one of the things in favor of it. Uh, and I talked to him about it. I gave him all the scriptures here. He was in a nursing home and on and on and I told him I said I promised I couldn't do one I said I can't do your, your funeral then and so I as I left the funeral home I overheard the funeral director and and the he was a young preacher was going to preach the service I, I went and shook hands and told him how sorry I was and I, I told him I can't have a part of him now listen you can if you haven't told God that but I did I told him that I told him I wouldn't do it and so I won't but some of our people went, and I'm glad they did. And if you haven't told God that, you go. You can have a part in it. You don't have to do what I'm doing. Uh, but anyway, I heard him over, over the conversation over her. And uh, the funeral director was saying to the young man, I said, I haven't, haven't ever seen anything in the Bible about cremation. 
I had never heard it. Have you? And the young man said to him, no, as I passed by. And I didn't feel the need. He's getting ready for the funeral. And I thought, this is not the time and place. And God's not called me to straighten out everybody. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't know. There's a lot of things I do. But, yeah, amen. Listen, we all, we all, no, I'm not to any anyone to look. But anyway, it happened. And uh, the Spirit of God just went all over me from head to toe, just uh, like electricity. And I said, oh, please don't. Don't do that. And they said, why? And you know what I said? I said, oh, no. That young preacher didn't know. And I'm dealing with some people now that uh, are giving some of my folks some bad advice, uh, some, or at least some people I know, some bad advice. And they said, you know, if it's, you know, if you died in a plane crash, you know, couldn't God put your body back together? Oh, and I said, well, sure, sure you could. But that's not the point. I want you to learn, so do this, do this. Write this down or burn it in your mind. Anytime you have a problem with anything, any kind of question, and I have it all the time, I have people ask me things, well, I don't know. <laughs> what did God say about it? Just ask yourself that, and then proceed to pray and ask God, and he'll show you. He will. He'll show you. Uh, the Bible says that, that uh, in Deuteronomy, in chapter 7, verse 25, it says, the graven images of their God shall you burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver, the gold that is in them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it's an abomination to the Lord. So, you, you got, listen, if you uh, uh, think about it, you think about the, the fact that uh, they could have spent that money. They could have melted it down into money. And God said, no, it's, that was offered to idols. That's a heathen practice. And so just go ahead and burn. He said over in Exodus, you remember Moses? You remember? Can you imagine Aaron? <laughs> Preachers don't know everything and leaders don't know everything. Aaron made a golden calf one day. And they were worshiping it. They said, these be thy gods, O Israel, that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Well, they knew better than that. Aaron knew better than that. And so Moses comes down from the mountain. He says in Exodus chapter 32, verse 20, he says that he took the calf which they had made and burn it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed upon the water and made the children of Israel to drink he made them drink of it that was the judgment of God on it uh, 1 Chronicles 14 12 and when they left their gods there David gave commandment they were to be burned with fire so God has commanded them to burn those heathen things and those heathen Baal and all of those things that they found and on and on and on uh, 2 Kings 10 26 and they brought forth the images. There it is again, out of the house of Baal and burned them. So it's number one, it's any biblical. We just want you to understand the scriptures on it. And whatever feeling you have on it, then that you just need to know. I want you to know what God said. Uh, cremo is to burn. That's what it means. Cremation. Cremo means to burn. Uh, particularly for the dead. Um, they reduce the body to ashes and, and, and it's uh, end up, I think, Rome practices it, India practices it still, the Hindus practice it. A lot of heathen uh, countries uh, practice that still. I think our, our forefathers of the, the Indians that were here originally, they did. And so, uh, Joseph Stalin requested to be cremated. Guess what? He thought he'd be able to get around the resurrection of the dead. And all the things he'd done, all the people he'd killed, he'd get by with it. Uh, I mean, an attempt to escape the judgment of God. Isn't that silly? It's silly. And so did Adolf Hitler. By the way, it wasn't carried out, but they wanted to. Andrei uh, Vyshinsky, uh, Adolf Eichmann, others, terrible criminals and people that killed many people. They said, well, we'll just escape the resurrection. Uh, we'll just have to be cremated. No, God can bring you back from whatever you've done. You know, if, you, if you're on a million people, pieces, if you were in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and you were here, no, he can bring you back. But we just want to know God's will. A Christian ought to always want to know what God said about it. And so, uh, we, we know every individual is going to be resurrected. The next thing is coming is the resurrection. I'm glad Jesus is coming Amen. again. And then a thousand and seven years later, the lost will be resurrected. Uh, it'll only be the saved at the first resurrection. He says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, what? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you and you have a God and you're not your own. You just read that scripture. And it's a wonderful scripture. We're not our own. And so he owns us and we ought to obey him. Uh, he said in Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 1, Ye are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves 
don't make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. And he goes on to say in uh, verse 2, For thou are unholy people unto the Lord. We're, we're holy. We are saved. We're holy. The Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people. We are peculiar to the world, aren't we? The world thinks we're funny. They wouldn't be down here today. They're out there playing around in, you know, somewhere and doing something different. Uh, they say, I wouldn't go to church. No. Uh, the Bible says, and I gave it to you the other day, if, if you weren't here in that service, then mark this down. Leviticus 19.28. It talks about tattoos. Don't tattoo your body. If you got a tattoo, just, you know, don't ask the Lord to forgive you. Don't get any more. Don't worry about it. Uh, how many remember Miss Askew? I'm going to tell her, Lord. <laughs> she had a tattoo. <laughs> she, she loved the Lord. That woman, <clears throat> excuse me, that woman could witness to more people. She'd sit in front of roses when up above the asphalt when it was roses. She'd sit there for hours and hand out tracts. Everybody gave me a few. She'd put tracks down in the beer cartons at the, at the, at the, at the I mean, she was just a blessing, but she had that there. Well, God said not to do it, so if you know, then don't do it. I think that's the reason we have so many in Walmart and places you go today that have them, because we're a heathen nation. But anyway, he said there, don't mark or tattoo you by. All right, Romans chapter 6, verse 13. I don't think all this is being preached today. I think a lot of people are just doing it in ignorance. Don't know. Romans 6.13, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. He said in Romans 12.1, You know well, I beseech you therefore, brethren, you can probably quote with me, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Uh, and so we need to do that. We need to do what God has said for us to do. Uh, turn with me, if you would, uh, to Amos. And I'm going to give you a minute to find it because that's a tough one. If you find uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Lamentations, uh, what is it, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, and then Amos, I believe. I'll give you a minute to turn there. I'm going to take me a minute to get over to Amos. I want to show you what God said about somebody that, that uh, because they were enemies, they cremated out of hatred and, and despicably he hated the other guy. Anyway, let me give you a minute. Amos chapter 2. That's a, that's a little tiny one. Hosea Joel Amos will die. Right All right. Here's what he said in chapter 2. Look at chapter 2. Amos chapter 2. Thus saith the Lord, for three, three transgressions of Moab, three Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom in the line. Now here's what was. They were bitter enemies. They hated each other. And the king of Edom died. I don't know how he died or what happened to him. It doesn't say. But anyway, the king of Moab uh, burned his body in the line. But he cremated it uh, because he hated it. Now, you know, it wasn't, wasn't just doing a, a relative or a neighbor or something. He hated it. And God hated what he did. He said for three transgressions of Moab and for four. Now God uses that expression a lot. But here's the funny thing about it to me. He didn't name but the one, did he? He didn't name but the cremation. I think the cremation ticked him off. It really ticked him off. Uh, the other thing is not so much, but, that, but he did it for all of them. Now he goes on to say what he did to it. Look at verse 2. But I will send a fire on Moab, that is the country of Moab, and it shall devour the palaces of Kiriath. And Moab, that is, now we're talking about the king of Moab, the one that did this, he shall die with tumult, with shouting, and with the sound of the trumpet. In other words, he's going to die in battle. And I will cut off the judge from the midst thereof, and will slay all the princes thereof with him, saith the Lord. So the Lord put a pretty serious judgment on this uh, king of Moab because he did all of this. And so uh, my judgment is not going to be turned away from Moab because he did four things, but he didn't name the other three. Isn't that amazing? All right, number two. Did you know that cremation is an aid to crime? I didn't know this. I read this. I, I've been trying to study it out. It's an aid to crime. Uh, those that are in a position to know, write this. And I'm just telling you what others that I think know what they're talking about. Uh, that uh, when you have a criminal poisoning, you know there's some poisons that they can go back after you die and dig your body up and find out that you've been poisoned. They can, and then they can convict people of it. Well, this fella did this. Let me read you the story here. Story of a man who was taken to court for poisoning another man. 
He, he was convicted. <laughs> now listen to this. This is bizarre. Our, our judicial system is horrible. He was convicted of, of poisoning another man. But because of a technicality, can you imagine? He got off. Because of a technicality. I don't think God would allow technicalities back in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. They don't think he would have done that. All right. But it was heard to say, he was heard to say after he got off and got away with it, he said later to somebody, he said, I should have had his body cremated. And that's true. Because you can't check the body after it's cremated. You can't check it for poison and so on. So it's an aid to crime. I'm talking about worldly people. We're not talking about Christians you know, that uh, have, have done this or have done that. You know, we're talking about people. But it's, anyway, let uh, me move on here. Let's just get that. Uh, was not the, it, you know, for, not for the Christian's responsibility, God. Uh, somebody said there, there's something to be said for it. What's to be said for it? It's cheaper. It is. It, it's cheaper. And I'll tell you, the, the uh, price of funerals is, is ridiculous now. But uh, sometimes we need to just plan and maybe get you a little barrel insurance or something. Or uh, go over here to this place right behind us. I think it does it. But I haven't figured out how much it is yet. But I think it's cheaper. And they'll just wrap you and put you in the you know, no, none of the trappings and so on. Anyway, anyway, uh, number three. Let's look at this. It's a curse not to be buried. I, I, I looked that up and I found it. And I said, "Wow, I'm, I'm surprised." God's people in the Old Testament and the New Testament were buried. Abraham bought a cave. He bought a cave to put his people in. He said that I might bury the, my dead. And I think he bought them from the sons of Heath. I think. He said, I want to buy that cave and bury it. They said, I'll give it to you. No, I want to pay money for it. He said, I want a place to bury my dead. And he was buried there and so on later on. So they were all buried. Uh, in uh, Genesis uh, 35, verse 19, it says that Rachel was buried by the way. They were traveling and she died and she was buried. It says her nurse was buried uh, under an oak. And so, so sometimes they were put in a cave or a sepulcher as Jesus was. Sometimes they were put into the ground. Uh, but uh, it was a curse not to be buried. According to Jeremiah, you might want to put this one down. Jeremiah 22, 19. It says, talking about uh, a man by the name of Jehoiachin. Jehoiachin, and he was a wicked king. And it says, Jeremiah 22, 19. He shall be buried with the burial of an ass. Drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. In other words, the donkey was so big or a mule was so big you couldn't bury it. And you just drug him out of town, you know. And he said that's the way that king is going to be because he's been such a wicked king. Uh, second Kings, uh, Jezebel, there, chapter 9, verse 30, 37, she was done that way. Ahab, uh, 1 Kings 21, 17 to 26, they were uh, done. I just give you some things to jot in your notes if you want to. Romans 14, 12, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. So we will. And our bodies belong to him, so remember that. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to as he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And, and we've all sinned. We've all done things. And so we're not, we're not going stones. I, I, I'm living in a glass house. I can't throw stones. No, after having studied what God says about it, and, and I had to, I had what I what I said was that day I will find out what what about it. So I began to pray about it, and within a month, God gave a, me a book. Uh, I ran across a book, and it told me a lot about it, and really had a lot. And I've got other books since then. And uh, anyway, I, I wouldn't want mine to be my body to be cremated. It's it's not that it's going to change your salvation. You still say. And God saves you. Say amen right there. God saves you. You say. That doesn't change a thing. And so it is less expensive. Uh, Joshua chapter 7. God ordered a cremation one time. He did. Uh, there's this man called Achan. His name was Achan in the Bible. And God said, don't take of the cursed thing. There were some things in there he wasn't supposed to take. And guess what? He went around and saying that way. He took of the cursed things. He took them and hid them in his tent. And God allowed a lot of people to die that day because of that in battle. They were fighting a battle. And he should have won the battle. It was a simple battle. They had it. It would have been a piece of cake. Easy. And uh, no, they began to die. And, uh, and so, uh, therefore, the children of Israel, he says in Joshua 7, 12, 
could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before they, they were running. They were running, getting killed all over the place. Because they were cursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, God said, except you destroy the accursed from among you. He, he ordered the, the man to be burnt. Stoned with stones and then burnt with fire. And uh, he says down in verse 25, Joshua 7, 25, Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And Israel stoned with stones and burned them with fire because he had taken the accursed. He caused a lot of people to die. And God didn't like that. He was accursed. And so, anyway, God ordered one. I just want to point that out. God took notice, you remember back in Amos, of that old heathen man. He was a heathen. A Moab. A Moabite. And uh, I, I tell you, think about that. His disapproval of the burning of bodies, and yet he ordered it for him. And so, we think about the final crematory, which is the lake of fire, Revelation 14, 11. And the smoke of their torment is sent up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast in his image, who, whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So we need to think about that. It's a picture like uh, thinking about uh, people going to hell. A person is saved will not go to hell. And somebody said that, by the way. I think somebody told me that recently, that, that they had a preacher say that, that uh, you'd go to hell if you were cremated. That's a lie. That's a lie. It's not so. If Jesus saved you, he saved you. That's the end of it. Uh, Revelation 20.10, the devil's going to be thrown in that lake of fire one day. Well, let me get one more point. We'll be finished. Number three, the Christian method of disposing of the body is very So if you want to jot some notes down, you can. If you want to jot some of these scriptures down, uh, and you go back and look them up. Of course, you just, if you've got a concordance, look in your, your concordance and you just on the burial or something, you'll find Genesis 15 and verse 15. Genesis 15, 15. I'll repeat these so you can get them. Genesis 23, 19. Genesis 23, 19. We're still in Genesis 25, verse 8 and 9. Genesis 25, verse 8 and 9. See someone taking notes yet? I'll, I'll wait. Genesis 50, verse 13. Genesis 50, verse 13. Genesis 50, verse 13. Let me mention something too. You, you remember Joseph that went down to Egypt and helped them through the famine and everything? Well, he died, and they embalmed him. Of course, that's what they did, they embalmed him there in Egypt. They were, in fact, I don't think they even know how to do some of that stuff today. It's amazing. They could do things that we can't do. But anyway, they embalmed him and put him on a cart, and guess what they did? They hauled him around for 40 years <laughs> through the wilderness, pulled him on a cart. And somebody said, well, it would have been much easier if he just had a little urn just carry him around. You know, it would have been. But that wasn't God's way. We want, we want to do that. Uh, all right, let me give you a couple more. Uh, Genesis 50, verse 25 and 26. Genesis 50, verse 25 and 26. Exodus 13, verse 19. Exodus 13, verse 19. Joshua 24, 32. Joshua 24, 32. And Joshua 24, 29 and 30 there. All right. And I'm going to mention one other thing. God went into the funeral home business one time. Did you know that? He went into the funeral home business. God went into the funeral home business when Moses died. Anybody remember that? He buried Moses. God buried Moses. Think about that. He could have zapped him with, a, I guess, a bolt of lightning or something and cremated him. And he could have done, but he dug a hole and buried him because he didn't want anybody to find him. And uh, I don't believe he put him in the cave. It doesn't say he didn't put him in the cave, but if he put him in the cave, somebody eventually would have found him. I believe he dug a hole and covered it up. And you never, because he said, don't want you to know. Don't, don't want anybody to know. They would have, they would have worshipped Moses. They would have worshipped him. And they would have worshipped the spot. But anyway, uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 19, 20, we read it in the beginning. Read it with me again if you're back in your text. What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. You have them not. You're not your own. For you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let me give you one more. We'll close. Uh, Romans 14 and verse 8. Romans 14 and verse 8 says, For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Doesn't matter how you bear it is. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. But it matters to God. And I think we ought to do what God wants. 
And so he just say, well, I, I just can't afford it. Well, get you a little, little you know, cheap uh, barrel uh, insurance or something. And, uh, and one fellow said the other day, he, he had been a preacher. He's not preaching as a missionary. But he said, uh, at our church, we help people. If somebody needs some help, good. And I would be willing to help somebody that needs some, you know, extra money. But anyway, I want to I talk about getting saved now. We don't want to close on that. That's, that's a kind of morbid thing about Kremen. But it needs to be on our, I wanted it on that because we need to refer other people to it, especially mm -hmm. preachers. Preachers are sometimes the most ignorant. I was. I was. I didn't know. I had never heard about it. I had never thought of it. But anyway, let's talk about Jesus. Jesus died on the cross. Hallelujah. Yes. From that valley of the shadow. They sing about him and yell, hallelujah. Boy, that's something. And it's, by the way, it's, it's gaining on us. How many realize that, that yeah, buddy, that, that shadow of death's gaining on me? I, I, I can tell the way I walk and the way I live. You know, when you get up in the morning, you can tell it. Can't bend that finger. Look at that finger. Can't straighten that finger out. Look at that anymore. What happened to me? What happened to me? That valley of the shadow is gaining on me. But Jesus died. And 54 years ago, praise God, 54 years ago, I asked Jesus into my heart. Some of you could, uh, maybe you don't know exactly when it was, but you know, kind of roughly, and you kind of remember it's about so, so many years. You don't have to know the day and the time and all that. But I'm glad 54 years I've been saved. And I'm going to heaven. Whatever they do with my body, I'm going to heaven. Amen. Uh, won't make any difference. But if you don't know Jesus, and there may be somebody that doesn't know Jesus, you never know. Here or watching, we want you to know that the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. The Bible says, As many as received him, just receive him, just receive the gift. You get a gift at Christmas time, you receive it. What if you were to say, I don't want your old gift, to your husband? Uh, I don't want your old gift. I don't, I don't, that's what we do when we say no to Christ, isn't it? I don't want your old gift gone. I mean, I, you said Jesus would die for and suffer and all that, but I don't want your old gift. That's what we're saying. Please don't say that today. If you're at home or even here, if you need the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll always give the invitation that Christ will save anyone who receives Him or believes in Him. Tim play us a, a, a verse, a couple of verses, maybe a Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Pastor Billy Balcom. For more information about New Beginning Baptist Church and our ministries, please visit our website at www.nbbc280.org. If you have any questions about our church or comments about this video, please use the contact page on our website or send an email to crane.t at nbbc280.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace for today and bright hope for tomorrow.